All right, so I was looking at these laws that a lot of people are uh, referring to. Hibble versus Texas, Brown, Brown versus somebody, um, uh, somebody Terry versus Ohio. You know, there's there's kind of some patterns that seem to develop with these court cases. It seems a, a lot of them uh, will uh, like get the uh, federal judge's attention because it's drug related or uh, maybe it uh, just leads to something bigger. If, if the case led to something bigger and these identification of uh, controversies if it led to yeah the drug a drug charge or if somebody had a suspended license or something like that then it makes us for a stronger case in the favor of police all right for them to identify you and for them to go beyond um, seemingly beyond reasonable means to identify you whatever it takes you know if, if you uh, if you don't show them a picture ID uh, they could take you to jail until you identify yourself type of thing like treat you like you're uh, an illegal alien of sorts there's been a lot of uh, a lot of problems with the the cops pushing beyond uh, what's what's necessary for the situation in trying to find out exactly who who the person is all right it's, and uh, you know they they can uh, check to see what your history looks like but uh, you know do they do they document their interaction with you in their police report as well you know it may it may not look so good when they say oh I just uh, contacted a subject maybe put a little description and then that's it give no names well, they, they don't. They definitely don't give names in uh, police reports in the newspapers, unless if a crime was committed. But uh, you know, if it's if it's you know for internal internal information, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how they can how they can uh, like like annotate or record all this information. How many times they've They've contacted a person and uh, develop that develop a history for the person. Um, you know that, that does that takes a lot of uh, effort uh, when they when they um, cut, annotate your your name every time they every time they interact with you. They have to they have to document your name. All right, it takes a lot of effort to, to keep records of that, and I, the way it sounds, that they don't do a very good job. All right, it sounds like they're just they're just fishing for warrants when they want to get your name. When they always have to get your name, they just they're they're fishing for warrants to see if you skipped out on a, a court case, pretty much. Um, and I mean, a warrant isn't just it just doesn't happen out of the blue. That's something that. Uh, it results from a, a ticket or some some kind of infraction that they they put against your your name all right so they they can they can use the the warrant system to and and uh, force you to identify yourself and and then uh, go from there and the system really is I mean it it doesn't feel very satisfactory to me because um, I'm trying to prevent myself from getting a warrant by waiting on this court case and it's a two month wait I don't know anybody who's got any regular job might well it, it kind of forces you if you got a job in another city or state or wherever and you really can't stick around it kind of forces you to plead guilty for that county that you were in that you got the infraction and it's strange, you can get the infraction in, in a city and then all of a sudden it becomes a national, your name is on the national register for warrants. And any any new city that you go into, your own city even, they can, they can arrest you and hold you for whatever 
that complementary uh, time frame is. I understand one guy from Texas, in Texas, is transporting a bunch of drugs, maybe like 70 pounds of marijuana, and he was, he, uh, was uh, arrested in, in uh, Idaho, possibly, possibly just uh, cops running his name and saw they had something in Texas. So they, they hold him for the complimentary 20, 20 days uh, to give Texas uh, an opportunity to decide whether to uh, extradite the man back to Texas. And a lot of times Texas turns it down and says no, they won't. Yeah, for it depends on you know the severity of the crime. But uh, you know, every time you get you get harassed by the cops, they every time they identify you, they'll they can arrest you if you have a warrant. And if uh, say Texas chooses not to extradite you, they can hold that over you. If you wanted to go to Montana, South Dakota, you know, every time a cop harasses you in a new state, they can hold you for that complimentary period of time in jail uh, to give Texas, once again, a new opportunity to uh, decide if they want to extradite you back, okay? And this is, this is based on a warrant, and if you have, if you, if, if the cop just harasses you and and has to identify you so they can run your name. All right, I'm trying to avoid all that. I don't want to deal with with that. But uh, you know, I live under extraordinary circumstances. Okay, I, I can be pretty um, I can be pretty adaptable to the situation because I'm homeless. There's people who have to go back to their homes and pay their bills on time and all that and work their jobs to be able to pay their bills. Um, whereas me, I, I can stick around and wait on the court dates. But, uh, you know, any average person is going to have a lot of difficulty if they wanted to, to try to fight something. If they go to one city and uh, they want to, they, you know, they feel like they've been wronged. And cops, I mean, they can go out of their way to... to uh, find something to ticket you for, uh, particularly in Boise County. I mean, that's a dwindling, dwindling area. People are leaving that area, and their revenue is hurting. <clears throat> I was just reading in the Boise County Facebook page how uh, they they don't sound too happy about uh, a secretary. Um, she's like a, maybe a records a records secretary asking for a raise and another staff member all right so they don't they don't sound too happy about um, any anything that's gonna raise the taxes for the people already living there as the population goes down in that area so the the, the, the people are gonna look for other ways to make money you know potentially with uh, people like me tourists who just happen to be uh, going in the area and exploring around it, trying to get familiar with it. Um, you know, I learned that there's a, a desperation for, for money, I'm thinking, that, that's occurred in there. I mean, I looked at the, once again, the Boise County <clears throat> website, and there, out of all the ads you could possibly see, there's an ad for, for the tow truck, my, the tow truck company, Mustang Towing. They they uh, advertised. They were able to advertise through Boise County's Facebook page. That was like the only like the only straight up business ad that I saw. All right, and those guys are live. Those guys are uh, you know they got three hundred and sixty dollars of mine on this. What I think is a false arrest record, but uh, it comes back to the state uh, uh, court case. Uh, the state of Idaho versus Godwin in 1991 uh, that they're they're sitting on with that uh, ID thing, but there's federal cases that I think um, should be applied and considered too, um, and something to argue.